all very welcome along to Season 5, Episode 41 of the Chant.ie Podcast. Ireland's premier horse racing podcast in association with Royal Sports, Gorham Park Racecourse, KCLO Radio and Syndicate Start Racing. Coming up on this week's show, Barry speaks to special guest Jimmy Mangan about star chaser Spillane's Tower, who has entered in the Novice Gold Cup at Barry House on Sunday. The lads look ahead to five key races on Boyle Sports Irish Grand National Weekend, as well as giving their best bets and now. The final fence in the Boyle Sports Irish National, three jiggers town, band of blood, thunder and roses and Katie Walsh have come storming up on the near side. What a lady rider she is. Katie Welch and Thunder of Roses wins for Sandra Hughes. It's Ladies' Day at the Grand National. Thunder and Roses wins the Grand National. If you haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Champ.ie YouTube channel as it helps to get horse racing content out there to the wider audience. We look forward to reading all your weekend hashtag five cast selections in the comments below. Sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Boyle Sports. Don't just bet. Choose wisely. Oh, and you're all very welcome along to Champ.ie. After the uh, Cheltenham four days, it's Easter Racing Festival with the Boyle Sports Irish Grand National going to take centre stage. Champ.ie, we're on to episode 41, season five, brought to you in association with uh, Boyle Sports, our betting partner, partner Gorham Park Racecourse, Syndicate Start Racing in KCLR. 96 FM. Right, we are going to have a very special guest in Jimmy Mangan on later in the show. Looking forward to hearing uh, Jimmy's thoughts. Of course, we know all know the well-known Jimmy Mangan, and uh, well, he's got uh, some he's got some nice uh, runners this weekend, and we'll be hearing from him later with Barry in the show. Barry Doyle, as always, joins us, and uh, Brian O'Keefe is back once again by popular demand uh, from Boyle Sports ahead of the uh, Boyle Sports Irish Grand National. Barry's got to announce a couple of winners in a moment. Moment. We'll get to that in just a second. But Brian, it's always a great race. The Boyle Sports Irish Grand National. It's the feature on Easter Monday. Obviously, with all this rain that's falling and everything that's happening, it's uh, it's just causing huge havoc uh, to racing in, in Ireland over the last seven days. Yeah, absolutely. The ground is currently heavy at Fairy House. I know Peter Rowe tweeted this morning they're expecting more rain between now and the race. So it's going to be pretty attritional, I think. I know one of Barry's fancies probably wants a bit better ground as well. But we've got a proud association with the race. It's 10 years, our 10th year of sponsorship this year. So we're looking forward to seeing how it goes. And hopefully we'll have another incredible story, David. And Barry, you're going to tell us uh, about a couple of people that are going to get a couple of free tickets because of their picking at uh, Cheltenham. And they're going to be going along to the uh, Boyle Sports Irish Grand National on Easter Monday at Fairy House. Yeah, well, of course, uh, David, the day-by-day -day videos for Cheltenham, they were very, very popular in fairness. There was loads of five casts uh, down below, or seven casts, if you like, because we had the seven races at Cheltenham. And we asked listeners to get involved and uh, post their seven picks, and all you had to do was have two or more winners uh, on the day on a day-by-day -day basis. But we announced their day one and day two winners already, but it's now time for uh, day three. And uh, day three at Cheltenham winner was Josh Midgley, and he had Grey Dawning and Tiopu. Uh, both winners uh, on the uh, the third day of Cheltenham and Stefano Cara, uh, he had absurd and better days ahead. He was day four winner, so get in touch. Uh, obviously, uh, coming up to Cheltenham, this is our first show after Cheltenham, um, so get in touch uh, via the DMs. Email us on champtheory at gmail dot com, and we'll make sure there's two tickets left at the uh, reception at Various for you. Excellent. Well, let's uh, flash up our five cast uh, races this week for you. And don't forget to pop in your entries below. And uh, this week, we're going to be looking at the two and a half mile Honeysuckle Mares Novice Hurdle, Grade 1, 235 on Sunday. Also, the Willow Warm Gold Cup, the Grade 1 at Fairy House on Sunday. Fairy House's big feature, the Ball Sports Irish Grand National. That's at five o'clock on Monday. And we're going to look at two races from Haydock on Saturday. That is the 205. That is the two mile series final handicap hurdle, Class 2. And the Stairs Series Final Handicap Hurdle, Class 2 at 240. So they are the five races for your five cast selections. And make sure to pop in with your entries down below. Right, lads, let's uh, kick on. Let's go straight in and look at uh, the 235 at Fairy House on Sunday. And uh, we've got uh, some really, really uh, interesting entries in here. Brighter days ahead went to the Cheltenham Festival. And uh, there was huge hope that she was going to... Uh, land the spoils there, brighter days ahead, but uh, was uh, colours lowered by Golden Ace, and I don't think there was any excuses, was there, lads, on the day for brighter days ahead, Barry? 
No, I don't think so, David. I think, um, in fairness, uh, I thought Jade DeGruzzi maybe didn't get the uh, the cleanest uh, runs through, and maybe she was the one to take out of the two out of Cheltenham. I think uh, she's certainly a mayor going forward and be following. Uh, but in terms of betting for this race, if the two of them were to show up, and I doubt they will, it's a pretty, a pretty t- a quick turnaround. You know, only two weeks off the back of that, uh, obviously, uh, graded race at Cheltenham, grade two. This, of course, a grade one named after the famous Honeysuckle. And maybe, you know, Kelly Alexander will run the mayor uh, given the fact, given connections, etc., and so maybe like to win this race, and you know if she was to turn up, she'd obviously have a lively chance. Jatara, uh, she's one that will have no issue on the ground conditions. The worry with Jatara would be the stable form, not from seventeen zero percent strike rate in the last two weeks, and. You know, she disappointed in the race last year. On rating, she'd have a big chance and she won't mind the ground. And she's won at Fairy House in the past. But the one, if she did rock up here, the one I did like, David, was fun, fun, fun. She's a rapidly improving uh, mayor, daughter of Martelline out of a presenting mayor. I just like the way she's been mixing it against the Geldings. Uh, obviously, had uh, the form has worked out from Exeter. It was only a three-runner race, but Favour and Fortune was back in second on that occasion. And I know fun, fun, fun was getting weight, but he's ran with good credit to finish sixth in the Supreme, not beaten all that far. And, uh, you know, she's, she's obviously been very, very impressive progressing at Nace last time out. And absolutely bolting up. So if she rocked up, I mean, she's eight to one in terms of an each way better. I'd say you'd have more given the prize money, given the fact that it is a grade one for mayors at Fairy House at eight to one each way. I think she's a crack in each way bet. Um, and as I said, I like the form from Exeter and she'll handle soft and heavy ground. So I'd say she's one for staying chases in the future. So I don't think stepping up and trip is going to be an issue. Fun, fun, fun. The each way pick for me, David, at this point in time. I'd say she'll run. Yeah, probably will. And that, Brian, that's kind of the big question, isn't it? What's going to line up here? Because uh, Barry's not so sure that Brighter Days Ahead and Jay DeGruzzi will both take their chance here so close to Cheltenham. What would your thoughts be on that firstly and the overall thoughts on the race? Yeah, I'd say we could see both of them, David. I mean, it's always hard to turn down a grade one chance, isn't it? Especially for a mayor that's a novice. But just going back to the race at Cheltenham, I thought they crawled along for the majority of the race. I don't think it suited either of the Irish horses, Jade de Grugy or Brighter Days Ahead. And I think Jeremy Scott's mare had just that little bit of two-mile speed that the others maybe lacked. So I think I think they could both show up. Just to mention Jatara, as Barry said, I had quite a lofty bet on her last year in the Mayor's and Offices at Cheltenham when she bombed out. She has poor at Punchestown after that as well. I know she's taken her form to the next level this season and maybe was a little bit unlucky at the DRF. But I'm just not sure she's a spring horse, David. And Jesse's yard aren't in great form. So I'd be willing to take on Jetara. Fun, 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 I think does have a big chance, as Barry said, each way price at eight to one. But I just think fun, fun, fun is a good horse and doesn't have that potential to be a great horse like the two at the top of the market. And if both of them lined up, I'd probably have a slight preference for brighter days ahead, stepping up to two and a half. I thought an interesting one here was Gavin Cromwell's runner. But well, if it runs, of course, Bioluminance. I thought that was a very good performance, Barry at Limerick last time, and won nicely as well at Punchestown. Um, that was on soft to heavy ground; shouldn't be a problem. Mm. And if it lines up here for Gavin Cromwell, we do know that that stable is in really, really good form. And uh, JP McManus, as we know, loves to have winners at the uh, the Easter Festival at Fairy House. Yeah, she's a big strapping mare, and another mention for Gavin's up. Other runner in the race, only by night. Who I cut up with Gavin down in Gorham Park on the eve of the Cheltenham Festival for Casey Law Radio. And he did mention, uh, David, uh, that, you know, only by night, this was the target. She was bypassing Cheltenham. And, you know, if you draw a line to a run at Doncaster last time out, where maybe the ground was a little bit sharp for her. Look, she's a listed bumper winner at Navin. She jumped very well on Hurdle's debut at Nace. She's one maybe that, you know, could be underestimated at her current price at about eight to one. And as you say, bioluminescence as well. It's going to be competitive. And for that reason, just just with the quick turnaround, David, just the 17 days, you know, just short or just over, should I say, two weeks uh, turnaround. You know, we've seen fancied ones getting beaten in this race in the past. And, you know, the ground is going to be testing. So there's going to be no prisoners here. So I take on, you know, the front two uh, off the, you know, the back of a, a quick turnaround from Cheltenham and going to side with fun, fun, fun each way coming here. She's progressive. Yeah, very much so, and uh, has got a big, big shout in that one. Right, guys, let's move on to the Willow Warm Gold Cup. It's the Grade 1, and uh, Jimmy Mangan is going to be telling us all about the chances of Spillane's Tower. For me, I've looked at the, the, the racing over this weekend, and I'm putting this forward. I, I think, Barry, you're going to be the same as a nap selection uh, for uh, Fairy House this weekend. But Spillane's Tower, oh, it's got all the right credentials. It's got all the right uh, form and everything. It ticks an awful lot of right boxes, and... Uh, wouldn't it be great to see Jimmy Mangan back in there with another grade one winner this weekend? 
I can't remember who it was uh, down in the comments along the course of the year. I said Spillane's Tower would win a grade one this season. And this looks like an ideal opportunity. But someone in the comments down, down below did not agree and was quite adamant that, you know, this wasn't a grade one horse. I think it is, David. And I think going right handed, um, you know, it's two from two going right handed over fences. Uh, and I just I love the fact that, you know, that his form tied in now with, with, with Blood Destiny. So I think we have a handle on the two of these. And I think the better horse going forward is going to be Spillane's Tower. I think Blood Destiny. And he had his own way in front last time over the two miles on heavy ground up at Navan. He's quite a good jumper, but not the strongest of finishers. Where it's, you know, uh, Spillane's Tower is a very, very good jumper, but you just know he's going to be coming home like a train. And I think stepping up and trip a race like this at Fairy House, you know, obviously the racing off levels here. This is a, this is a great one. It looks an ideal opportunity for Jimmy Mangan. Um, as I say, off the back of the last, you wouldn't want, if you're on Blood Destiny, Spillane's Tower running, running you down. And I, I just think uh, there's a lot in his favour. He's proven on heavy ground. And as I say, going right-handed, I think uh, could see Spillane's Tower win a grade one at Fairy House. Yeah, I think it's got an, an absolutely superb chance this weekend. Brian, what would you like in the race? Would you be in Spillane, uh, Spillane's Tower Camper? Would you be uh, siding with the Willie Mullins train runner Blood Destiny, who lowered the colours last time, of course, of Spillane's Tower? I have to say, Spillane's Tower for me, I'd probably be a little disappointed if he won a grade one, albeit it is a, it is a very weak one. If he is going to win one, I think this one will be it. But it's another race, isn't it, that revolves around these Cheltenham horses and who's going to show up? Will we see at Ielete Tomp? Will we see Founder 50? I can see Founder 50 improving for a step up and trip. But the one I like, another runner at Cheltenham, will he show up here? It's Zana here. I know he's probably all laughing, but I can give Zana here a good chance here. I think he was very, very good over hurdles, a lot better than these. He's got that strong form over hurdles. I thought he ran a cracker in the Turners at Cheltenham. And if he rocked up here, I think he could be a little overpriced. Willie Mullins has been talking up tactical move quite a bit lately as well. But I'm just not sure I like that horse's attitude. Tends to swish his tail, rather. So for me, Zana here at a price. Who will come out on top between Spillane's and Blood Destiny? It's again up in the air. Over two and a half, I'd probably have a slight preference for Spillane's Tower. I think Blood Destiny is probably a ball of speed. And again, he could be found out over the longer trip. But for me, yeah. Zana here, nine to one each way. Yeah, nice, nice each way shout there. But uh, for me, definitely Spillane's Tower here. He's got to be the the horse that, look, this is, you know, as grade ones go, this is an opportunity for him. So that's the way we see that uh, Gold Cup, the grade one at 4.55. Right, guys, we're moving on to the feature. It is, of course, the Boyle Sports Irish Grand National over three miles and five furlongs. Fairy House, five o'clock on Monday. Brian, I'm going to come to you first. Um, as Ray sponsors Boyle Sports, where um, or if any, have we seen money going um, in the anti-post market ahead of the national on Monday? Yeah, we've had a couple of big movers here, David. Nick Rocket originally opened up at eight to one when the weights were released. He's half that price now at four to one. But the biggest mover of all is the old boy, Annie Second. Now he was as big as forty to one anti-post and is into twelve to one. Is it JP's money? I guess we'll find out on Monday, but he's the big, big mover any second now. Yeah, any second now is the interesting gamble. Ted Walsh is runner, of course. He's got plenty of experience coming into the race. Um, coming into this one, guys, this is, um, firstly, we could probably potentially have the smallest uh, field in a national in years, uh, the way things are going. But we're going to have to wait for the final declarations and everything to come true here. Uh, Barry, um, a rightful favourite in this uh, Nick Rocket. I know I was speaking off air before the show. Um, you have your observation. You have kind of slight concerns about this favourite. Well, he's been laid out for the race, and obviously novices have a really decent record in the race. David, you know, seven years of age. I think uh, was it five of the last nine winners have been age seven, and you know. Novice, second season novices have a good record. Willie Mullins, how can you knock, you know, his training performance at Cheltenham Stable in rude hell coming in here? And so, yeah, look, it's 10 stone 13 as the weights are at the moment. He'd have to have a chance. But look, he's by walk in the park and just stepping up and trip now to uh, three miles, uh, five furlongs on this type of ground. Look, he's gone on heavy ground in the past. He's good form over the course. Obviously won last Easter uh, over hurdles. And, you know, off his current mark of 146, he's obvious claims. But at that sort of price now, if you're not on a bigger price, I'd be inclined to leave him now. And I'd say Paul Townend will probably ride him. Look, Willie Mullins has made no secret about <clears throat> this horse. And, um, you know, the fact that they've skipped Cheltenham and, you know, this has been his target. So 
He's obvious claims at that price and leave him. I'd be looking for one maybe at a bigger price each way. <clears throat> it's just interesting, David, when on the, uh, of course, uh, the Boyle Sports Irish Grand National launch um, earlier on just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Sandy Shaw, the Irish uh, handicapper, did mention intense raffles. Uh, you know, this horse is the one horse in the race he, he can't make head nor tail of. Uh, the fact that, you know, he's rated 140. He said he could have given him 130 or 150. He's just no idea how good this horse is. And he could be absolutely thrown in. He's gone on the ground. He's won at Fairy House and he's been, you know, connections seem to be fairly bullish. Of those two, I probably would just about side with intense raffles, just given the fact that you have the unknown factor. You know, he could be he could be absolutely thrown in here, uh, carrying that sort of weight. Hard or dark? Look, he's 9-1 to one in the betting for Gavin Cromwell. He said he'd stamina concerns last time out, uh, going into the Leinster National. So, you know, stepping up in trip, might that might the trip just find him out? And Desert Moor House is the one I would have liked for this race if the ground had to come up a little bit nicer. I think we're going to have, you know, really testing uh, conditions. And we when we had Martin Brazel on the podcast a couple of weeks ago leading up to Cheltenham, he did say he's left in the entry national and, you know, if the ground comes up very, very heavy, they'll have to consider that. So, um, look, I think he's a really nice profile for the race. He's a novice, he's, but yet he's had six runs over fences. He won the Kerry National. He'll stay all day. Um, I just would be maybe concerned about, you know, the ground for him. Any second, now I have to say, Brian, I'd be disappointed if a 12-year-old was to win a race like this. Um, you know, he had his chance a couple of seasons ago. But the one I come back to is, again, is seven years of age, uh, has a nice profile for the race. Uh, I like Senior Chief. You know, he jumps quite well for a novice. And, you know, he went off two to nine at Punchestown. He was entitled to win last time. But I have to say, I like I liked what he'd done from the back of the last to the line. He really picked up. He's, he's a stout stayer. Um, he hit a, a flat spot over two miles seven last time at Punchestown. But, you know, he's two from two on heavy ground. Uh, thought he'd done it nicely. Showed a good attitude last time out. And so he'd be the one I just about side with. You know, he's a good jumper. If you can get into a rhythm, we know Henry has such a good record in these big stay and handicap chases. Um, and, yet, you know, if you look back at his run and penultimate run, he's only beaten two lengths by Manila Kakuna. Um, that was off levels in the beginners. He's getting seven pounds off him. And, you know, some people are giving him a lively each way chance. Uh, I think the ground is, you know, going to be a big, big factor. And you know, with Rachel Blackmore on board, Henry's only runner in the race. I thought at 12 to 1, he could be overpriced. So each way for me, senior chief, I think he takes plenty of boxes for a race like this and could be unexposed off 141. A horse at a massive price, Brian, and this is Dunboyne. He was favoured for the uh, Goffs Estes down in Gorham Park. He was pulled up in that race. He was since pulled up. But obviously confidence after finishing fourth in, 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 in Navin in the Troy Town uh, back in November. He's a big, big price at 33 to 1. People will be looking for a bit of value, won't they, with the each way terms, particularly in which Boyle Sports have for the uh, big one on Monday. Yeah, we'll be going six places from Saturday morning. Dunboyne is an interesting one. He's obviously a horse with plenty of talent, but I'm just wondering, is there is there an issue there, whether it's breathing or something else? He always travels into the race, and as he said, he often struggles to finish off. But if he does come into one, he does finish his race, 40 to 1 could be a massive price, especially with the six each way places. But what a race it's going to be, David. I mean, it's easy to see why Nick Rocket's favourite. He was good over hurdles. He's unexposed. Novices have a brilliant record in the race. But he is short enough, as Barry said, in a race of this nature where there could be quite a few horses with a few pounds up their sleeves. The obvious one, I think, is good time Johnny for Tony Martin, isn't it? Hacked up into per temps at Cheltenham last year off a mark of 142 over hurdles. He's 10 pounds lower over fences. I thought he was really eye-catching behind Hartwood at the Dublin Racing Festival when he stayed on to into fifth, rather. A lot of horses that day didn't really stay on. He was one of few in that race. Probably doesn't want bottomless ground, but he does handle soft. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes. I think he could make it or take a rather a massive step forward. And we know Tony Martin can rally one for a big race. I mentioned earlier on, any second now, being hammered anti-post. The case for him is obvious as well, even if Barry doesn't like him. And he's been there, he's done it. He's nearly got the t-shirt twice at Aintree. He's got stamina, he jumps, he's got that little bit of toe as well. And his mark has been in free fall. He's 27 pounds lower than what he ran off at Aintree last year. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes and another one that takes a step forward in the spring. But as Barry said, the big negative of 12 year old, 1978 was the last 12 year old we saw win in this race and that was brown lad and a final one to mention i feel like i'm going through half the field intense raffles as barry said again the real unknown here sandy shaw said he found this horse really really difficult to handicap coming from france he's bolted up twice in fairy house since he came to ireland is he chucked off in a oh, chucked in rather off oh, 140 it's six to one to find out but for me i'll probably take a chance that finally 
good time Johnny will get us jumping together and can win a big pot for Tony Martin. And just before we finish up on the national, where it all began as well for Gordon Elliott is another interesting one. That's a fourteen to one chance. Finish uh, one two starts called punches down, and of course it uh, denied the gamble. We'll have one lads for Willie Mullins right down at the bottom nine stone four. We'll have one second backed off the boards, beaten a long way behind where it all began. But it's that kind of a race, isn't it? You can you can make a case for plenty of horses going into this big race on Monday, Barry, because it has that open feel to it this year, doesn't it? Particularly with conditions and ground and everything the way it's going to be. Well, only Tony Martin will know if this was plan B, but, you know, Derek O'Connor actually was on board, I think, uh, over that two and a half miles, which I thought was interesting. It was an eye-catching run at Leperstown. And then, um, obviously, the English uh, handicapper, the BHA, I think, gave him 10 pounds on top of his mark, which would have left him on 140, still below his hurdles mark. And when he finished, uh, obviously, when he won the Pertemps last year. And I have to agree with Brian, if it was to, to throw another one into the mix at a double figure, I'd say he'll be fine on the ground. Look, it was soft ground at Cheltenham when he won last year. He'll creep away. He'll be carrying an absolute featherweight, nine stone 13. And uh, yeah, if there was to be two against the field for me, just given the ground conditions and Desert Moor House might go uh, to entry, as we said, it's a smaller field. Good time, Johnny. There might be less traffic issues. Yeah, I could see him coming into the mix. So um, yeah, good time, Johnny. But the main one for me, would be senior chief, I have to say. And uh, just, just to mention as well, we haven't mentioned, I don't think any of the Jigginstown runners, they've won it three times in the last eight uh, seasons, or eight renewals, should I say. And because uh, it was abandoned, wasn't it, uh, due to go, I think, one of the seasons. But, um, you know, when the mud's flying, would one of them enter the fray as well? General Principal, of course, won the race a couple of seasons ago for Gordon. Right, before we go to our first ad break, gentlemen, what about all the uh, firing of shots from across the Irish Sea about Irish runners coming across, uh, English trainers saying Irish domination, all the rest. Brian, where do you sit on this, uh, all of these you know, trainers with the, the comments about Ireland dominating, having limiting runners in the UK? Is it a lot of nonsense talk to all of this, considering you know, the sport is competitive, the best horses need to go to the best races, and that's pretty much the end of it. I'd like to get your thoughts on it. Yeah, Dr. Richard Newland has really dug himself a hole, hasn't he? I mean, it's what it's all about, these best horses clashing against each other from both sides of the Irish Sea. They say this kind of thing is cyclical, isn't it? I mean, Irish dominating now, maybe the English will be dominating in 10 years' time, but Willie Mullins just seems to have a complete stranglehold on the game. I think Harold Kirk is an absolute genius, and they buy so well. It's not as if the English trainers aren't spending money, but maybe they're just not spending money in the right places. But yeah, I have to agree, David. Complete cods wallop. Um, this is what Cheltenham's all about. And it, again, it adds a bit of excitement even to the lesser meetings, like a day at Sedgefield and Irish Raider always piques our interest. So I think that's what makes racing interesting. And yeah, it'd be a massive loss to the sport if any of that was even considered. And, and it won't be considered, Barry, sure it won't, because it is a lot of cods wallop and it's just uh, firing from the hip before thinking from the good doctor. <laughs> the good doctor. Well, let me tell you something about the good doctor. Unless he puts out a statement, he, I think we've had over 70, um, sorry, over 100 uh, special guests on this podcast, trainers and jockeys. But unless he puts out a statement, uh, the good doctor won't be on the Champ Daly podcast. Absolute rubbish. And yeah, look, you know, I think if you look at the results of Cheltenham, nine wins, uh, to Willie Mullins, nine wins, you know, across the court, across the rest of Ireland, and say, uh, you know, nine wins. That just, I suppose, when it comes to some of these English trainers, they don't like getting beaten, and uh, the days are ruled Britannia, long and truly gone, David. Absolutely, comes... and uh, that that's it, right? That leads us nicely, and we're going for an ad break, and we'll be back with uh, the final two races that we're going to look at. They're both at Haydock on Saturday, and we'll be right back after these. And of course, we still have to hear from Jimmy Mangan on the show this evening. Grange and Patrick Mullins. Brilliant. So delighted to be joined by Jimmy Mangan on the uh, Champ Day podcast. Looking ahead to what's an exciting weekend, of course, at uh, Fairy House this weekend. And Jimmy, speaking about excitement, so you must be fairly excited to have uh, Spillane's Tower in the yard. Oh, we are indeed. He's, um, he's a cracking horse from River. So 
grateful to the McManus family for, for giving us such a lovely horse to train, you know. And did you always believe uh, he could be uh, a great chaser in the making? Well, from the day one that he came into the yard, he was brilliant, beautifully broken. And uh, there wasn't a quirk of any description. He was a straightforward horse. And, uh, yeah, we did like him from the, from the very start. We liked him, yeah. yeah. And uh, I suppose, what type of a character is he before he goes to the race course and even at the race course? What type of character uh, is he? He's totally relaxed here. A little bit older. Anybody would get excited. You get excited yourself when you go to the races. But uh, no, he he's, he's he's not bad at all. He's a lovely temperament, really. You know, I wish every house had a temperament like him. Really, he just sleeps and uh, he goes up there at night and he uh, gives his head a rub. And he though he's a totally relaxed, uh, nice to sleep and eat and take life nice and easy until he goes to the races, which is that's why you want him to perform, you know. Yeah, and I suppose uh, his dam, he's, there's quite a bit of speed in his pedigree, Jimmy. He's said, uh, I suppose he's re- his dam is related to uh, a German Group 3 winner over the mile. And so, but yeah. I suppose looking at him on the race course, Jimmy, doesn't appear to be short of stamina. Seems to do his best work a- a- at the finish. Do you think stepping up should suit yeah. him? Well, no, he's definitely break the speed, but uh, he, he's big, uh, he's big asset is, uh, is um, he's stamina without a doubt, and he's Touch with it all in the cross on him, but he's a beautiful jumper, and Mark White and himself seem to gel very well together, you know. And I suppose Blood Destiny and himself have taken each other on on a couple of occasions this season. Obviously, he, he beat him at Punches down Spillane's Tower, but uh, Blood Destiny then got the better of him up uh, over two miles, should I say, on testing yeah. ground up, up up at Navin. What way do you, yeah. do you see it playing out this weekend? You'd be hoping you're frustrated, but. You know, Willie is a is a master and uh, and um, and Paul Thompson, you know. But uh, look, there's others in the race. It's one. Gordon is there. It's one hell of a race. He's, every horse that's entered has a life chance. Uh, the, the, the nine that are left have a real life chance, you know. And I suppose uh, looking at the race, obviously you've you've done well in this race in the past. But um, has this a uh, race at Barry has the Novice Gold Cup been in your mind for a while? Yeah, it was always a race I liked. No doubt about it. I, 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 Really, uh, I, I did fancy Conor Castle 16 years ago to, to beat the likes of Big Zeb and uh, Paul Cabridge. Cabridge delivered the goods. Uh, you know, he was really, uh, you know, Paul was incredible. And uh, we had a great day that day and hopefully we'll have another one, you know. And in your opinion, do you think he's up to, to grade one level over fences? Well, he's not. He won't be far off. I can tell you that. He won't be far away. Yeah. Fitness wise, do you think he's come on from 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 Navin? Fitness wise, won't yeah. Fitness wise, won't be an issue this time. No way. Look at it. I suppose say uh, this weekend, obviously uh, elsewhere, Jimmy. Just a uh, mention to the other two entries, obviously down at Cork, you've two entered. Yeah, the, the, definitely. Um, Daddy, uh, Daddy Max is a uh, young chaser. Uh, he won his twenty pound well back at uh, Bandon, a, a good winners race. There was lots of uh, people went back to Bend into the I don't know there was a dozen horses in that race I think and uh, there was going to be no pace and I my fellow went away to the front and he didn't come back on heavy ground and look it's still raining down here so hopefully for another day or two I won't say no to the rain you know yes and uh, Jimmy I suppose um, the the feature this weekend is up at various and we hope to see you up there but uh, the uh, of course the the Irish Grand National always a uh, featured race that we look forward to every single season. Anything maybe catching the eye? What Any stories you'd like to see happen? Well, you know, I nearly bred the winner of it myself. Jenny Woods rode a horse called Amber Speedy for Arthur Moore. And uh, unfortunately, Jenny Pittman and Jason Tickley came over and just uh, by the shortest of a shot head, I'd say, uh, denied me of breeding the winner of the Irish National. But uh, look, it was... Uh, there's one old horse I actually know with Ted Welch's horse uh, any second now. What a great, what a great servant he's been, and uh, it would be lovely to see him at the age of twelve. Is it a uh, brown, brown lad? Many years ago, many many years ago, brown lad was the last twelve year old I think to win it. So uh, it would be great to see any second now. You know, at his all his age near retirement to bring it up. You know. Jimmy, look, we wish you the very best this weekend with uh, Spillane's Tower and, uh, of course, your other entries down at Cork. It was brilliant having you on the Champ Lee podcast and uh, hopefully see you up uh, at the weekend at Fairy House. Oh, thank you very much. No problem. 
Welcome back to the next part of Champ.ie podcast this week. Of course, we're episode 41, season 5, brought to you in association with Gorham Park Racecourse, Syndicate Start Racing, Oil Sports, our betting partner, and KCLR 96 FM Radio in Kilkenny and Carlo. Right, lads, let's move on because we're going to look at two very good races at uh, Haydock on Saturday. We're going to look firstly at the two mile, two mile series final handicap hurdle. It's a class two contest. Brian, I'm going to come to you first. Brentford Hope, last time out, winner for Harry Durham and uh, Paul O'Brien here. They've got the favourite at around nine to four. I thought the playful saint for Dan and Harry Skelton was a, a very interesting runner. And also for Mildam, who's uh, Jamie Snowden's runner, Gavin Sheehan, in around the five to one mark. Your read on this one. Terrible news for you, David, because I quite fancy the same horse, playful saint for Dan and Harry Skelton. I still think he could have a few pounds up his sleeve. Really consistent since joining the team. Two wins and three placed efforts, of course, from six starts in the UK. thought the eye-catching run was obviously his third in last year's Imperial Cup behind ICO. I think he had issues in the aftermath of that race. We hadn't seen him for a full year, but I thought he ran a huge race full of promise at the beginning of this month in a Class 3 at Stratford. He just got touched off that day, but I think he'll be absolutely spot on for this. Him and the winner pulled miles clear that day, and if he can bounce back here, or if he doesn't bounce here, rather, after the big, big break, I think he could take a massive step forward on that effort. I think he's a horse that probably needs a run to put him right. I'm not sure he's best fresh, so I think that will make him strip that little bit fitter, and I'd be surprised if he didn't go very, very close. So I'd be against the favourite Brentford Hope. I think he's a bit of a weak finisher. So it's all a bit playful saint. I don't know whether that's good news or bad news. The fools seldom differ. Well, it's, I think, good news. And I think anyone that can get a bit of the four to one that's currently available with Boyle Sports, I think that is well worth uh, uh, taking now because I do see Brentford Hope drifting uh, before the race off. And I do see Playful Saint coming in, as do I see the price as well of Mildam, who's at five to one. Right, Mr. Doyle, what do you think? I think he'll be backed in even further, this uh, Brentford Hope. I mean, he was a 100 performer on the flat. Um, he's progressed from 114, I think was his, his original mark when he joined uh, Harry Derham over hurdles. And uh, obviously, you know, one is made and has progressed this year. Uh, look, I have to say, I, I love the way he hit the line last time out off the back of, I suppose, uh, losing momentum at the last. I thought he was awkward, but I thought the change of tactics last time was key. He dominated, he travelled from the front end, uh, travelled sweet. And he only got five pounds from the handicapper as well, which I thought was lenient enough. Uh, as I said, he, he, he met the last... Not on an even stride, so he was actually quite awkward. And I thought he pulled out plenty. And I have to disagree with Brian. I thought he really showed a good attitude and uh, ran all the way to the line at Newcastle last time out. I think he is improving. I think there's still more room for improvement. Look, he's he's to carry a big weight here. You know, twelve stone at the moment. You know, on 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 testing ground at Haylock, but he's proven himself on soft ground. I think he's going in the right direction. I think Harry Harry Durham as well. Uh, you know, the improvement he's got out of this horse, firstly, but the stable form as well. Uh, currently operating at just short of a twenty percent strike rate, but he's he's had plenty of runners in the last fortnight running very well. So I think eleven to four best price at the moment. I'll take that, David Brentford Hope. All right, that's uh, it's all about opinions, and uh, that's what makes this great this uh, game so great. Right, our final race that we're going to look forward to is a three mile stairs series final handicap hurdle at Haydock on Saturday. Barry, what are we like in this one? Yeah, got to go a juicier price for this, David, and uh, the one I like is. 10 years of age, but it's only had seven starts on the race course in his career. Incredible stuff. Uh, Richard Phillips, runner, who's uh, operating at a good strike rate, 33% from his team from his last, uh, well, I think it's uh, five runners in the last fortnight. But um, he ran an absolute cracker, David, on heavy ground off the back of a 700-day absence. So, obviously, maybe a slight concern at the bounce factor, but you're getting a, a decent price, I think, here uh, for each way terms, 12 to 1. Finn Lambert has, has rode this horse on his last two starts, so knows the horse well. And he's a jockey. I think full value for his three pounds at the moment. Um, the form particularly looks strong uh, from uh, from Warwick, should I say, on its last run, uh, where the obviously he finished fourth, uh, Picana, and uh, first and second on that occasion were Emma Tom and of course Kintara, who went on to both place uh, in the, uh, the Pretemps uh, final at the Cheltenham Festival. So I think that form looks uh, quite strong. He's uh, I suppose remained on one two two, so I think he can be competitive off that mark, and he's proven over three miles plus on on t- uh, testing ground. So, um, just looking at the weather forecast for Haydock, it's currently a uh, soft ground. We are due quite a bit of rain on Friday as we're recording, and I think it's meant to be relatively dry uh, on uh, Saturday, right? So, uh, right up until racing. So, the ground might just dry a 
out enough to be, you know, soft ground, which he has proven form. As I mentioned, uh, 10 years of age. He's no spring chicken, David. But as I said, he's only had the seven runs. So obviously, he's had his problems. But I liked this run last time. I thought he traveled well. Uh, off the, comes from off the pace as well. And he's obviously a proven stare. So off one, two, two. I'll take my chances. 12 to one each way uh, on this uh, Picana for the Richard Phillips uh, stable. Number nine. Brian, what do you think? Astronomic view, top of the market around four to one with shoe shine by and gosh how posh next in the betting at thirteen to two chance. Yeah, I have to say I like the fab here for Sue Gardner. I think it's a race full of horses that can throw in a bit of a clangor, and I've been quite impressed with this astronomic view. Uh yeah, really consistent profile. And he hasn't been out of the first three in his last six starts. He has got some really strong form as well tied in there with four of the six horses coming out of the race at Exeter and winning since from November. And the Ascot race in February, four horses came out of that since and won as well. Really impressive, I thought, at Warwick last time out, David, when he bolted up off a mark of 115. That was over three and a quarter miles. No problem with the stamina, no problem with the ground. And I'm not sure an eight-pound rise is going to stop this horse tomorrow, or on Saturday, yeah. rather. Yeah, you're right. I think it's got a very, very good chance. Barry, ask you about uh, the chances of secret tricks here in the race for um, Ollie Murphy's yard. I thought that might uh, be an each way option here uh, in around the eight to one mark for this race. Yeah, tongue strap and cheek pieces on for the first time. I don't think stamina is going to be an issue. Secret Tricks is obviously proven. And uh, Brian mentioned, said the consistency of astronomic view. Uh, and I'd agree with that. Always runs a fine race and will have no issue on the uh, the ground. That'd be maybe, maybe my slight concern uh, with Ollie Murphy's charge here. Has uh, some decent form on good ground. And obviously it's going to be testing. And Haydock testing is different probably to, to testing anywhere else, uh, certainly in the UK. So that would be an issue. Gosh, how posh. Look, that's blinkered for the first time. It would have, would have given that a live chance if it crept in uh, to the uh, Pertemps at uh, Cheltenham. But needed to win, didn't it, uh, last time to, to to ensure its place in the lineup, And so uh, it was, pull, you know, was pulled up. I thought it was very disappointing last time. It could be unexposed still after having just the, uh, the seven runs. But I don't think Philip Hobbs or... Uh, Johnson White just reading the uh, the comments afterwards. They had no genuine excuse for for that performance last time, and I think the ground as well. Its best form is on nicer ground. Gosh, how posh! Uh, Shoe shine boy for Donald Williams and uh, Craig Nickel. That's obviously on a hat trick bid. And uh, said uh, Donor Bay for Emma Lavelle. Didn't like the way that finished its race last time out. Swishing his tail as well. Maybe attitude concerns with him and if there was to be another one each way his form tied in with astronomic view actually finished in front of Mary on in the season was the six-year-old i'm not even going to try pronounce it but it's number five on the race card for venetia williams and uh, charlie deutschu stable now starting to catch fire once again they love it when the mud is flying and you know six winners in the last two weeks uh, i think you can mark up uh, the uh, number five on the race card for Venetia Williams. Look, it's 10 to one. But I just think I'm intrigued by this Pecana for Richard Phillips. Smaller stable, obviously. Um, but, you know, coming in into a race like this off one, two, two, you know, nicely weighted, stays the trip. Ground not going to be an issue. And uh, yeah, I like the form, the overall form, as I mentioned, with Emma Tom uh, finishing first at uh, Warwick last time out and second on that occasion uh, was a Kintar and both went on to place in the Pretemps final at Cheltenham so I think that's all it for Right for you listening don't forget to to put in your five cast selections they are the five races once again uh, for you to put your five cast selections in the comment section below Right lads are going to come to you we're going to get our just best bets of the weekend and then we're going to take an ad break and we'll be back with our nap selections but Going to come to you firstly, Brian. Just best bet firstly for the weekend. What you like, best bets. And uh, we, as I said, we'll get your nap right after the break. Yeah, what I mentioned earlier, the one you like as well, David, Playful Saint on Saturday at Haydock. I think he takes plenty of boxes. He'll be primed for the race and he could take plenty of beating. Just as well to mention Saint Sam on Monday at Fairy House. I'm hoping a lot of this field stand their ground. We've got Ash Tree Meadow, appreciate it. Easy game all in there along with Field Or. But I think Saint Sam has taken a real step forward this season and he could be hard to beat in that grade two at Fairy House on Monday. So there are my two. Yeah, and I'm going to go with uh, Playful Saint. I agree with you completely. And I'm just going to take a chance on Don Boyne, that the Gordon Elliott trained team uh, can get Don Boyne back to somewhat of form. As I said, he was really well fancied uh, for the Tiestes and Gordon. He was went off favourite. If he can bounce back, he could be a massive each-way play. And with those six places on offer from Boyle Sports for the National, 
might not be the worst for each way play in the world. Let's see how that goes on Monday. And for you, Barry, your best bets? Yeah, I've got to go with fun, fun, fun. Uh, it's uh, eight to one each way for the uh, the mares, the honeysuckle mares. I think, look, I think she's a decent price at that. Back in against her own sex. The form is working out with, you know, favour and fortune, running well in the Supreme from Exeter. And uh, I thought at eight to one she was worth a, a go each way. And we'll probably have a couple of darts in here. Senior Chief. Uh, eleven to one for the uh, the Boyle Sports Irish Grand National. I have to mention him. I think he's a good price there at, at eleven to one. And another one to mention in the uh, in the novice handicap over two and a half miles at Fairy House two o'clock on Sunday is uh, John Kiley's runner Joyo uh, Vivo. I thought caught the eye caught certainly caught my eye last time out at Punchestown and off its uh, current mark look it's uh, reasonably lightly raced uh, this uh, Joyo Vivo uh, son of Capgar I think the ground will be perfect for it and off 111 I think he could be on a nice mark having just its second run in the handicap in the McManus so, so Joyo Vivo uh, for the master John Kiley as uh, Brian Gleeson would say on RT uh, the master John Kiley in that at uh, 2 o'clock on Sunday at uh, Fairy House so that's one I think uh, look obviously we don't have prices for that race and I will give one last mention David before we come to Naps in just a moment uh, to Lieutenant Mayan in the Mac- Mac- McNeil Silks it's uh, entered up in the bumper at Fairy House the very last uh, race in the Easter Festival uh, one last time out I thought snugly and uh, there was a change of tactics on that occasion after taking an age to get going uh, up at Musselburgh when winning on its first start for the McNeils. But Thomas Coyle, of course, was on the podcast uh, for a long time with us here. Obviously had this horse in pre-training and uh, you know, quite a nice horse, I think, runs in the bumper uh, on Monday at Various. Right, we're going to head into our final ad break before giving you our nap picks of the weekend. Yes, uh, so it is on to Nap's uh, pick for the weekend. Firstly, Barry, going to give you first dibs on your nap for this weekend. Uh, we've kind of alluded to it. Spillane's Tower thinks ticks uh, plenty of boxes. A step up and trip will be key. I think it's a grade one horse and it'll get its day uh, at Fairy House on Sunday afternoon. So Spillane's, t- Spillane's Tower, should I say, two to one for the man of the Wexford hat. Although you say it's not a Wexford hat, Jimmy Mangan. Don't think it's a Wexford hat, but you can we can we can get confirmation maybe on that from Jimmy himself. I'm with that as well. Spillane's Tower is the nap pick of the weekend. Brian, your nap for this weekend? I know it's a big weekend of racing over the jumps, lads, but the all-weather has been calling my name. The 240 at Lingers on Good Friday, the all-weather Vaz Mile. I thought Benevente has an absolutely massive chance for Kevin Coleman. I thought he absolutely hacked up the last day when plenty went wrong. Shane Gray was a pain to only win by as little as he could. But the handicapper, he's been astute and put him up eight pounds. I just thought he broke poorly that day. He was drawn in the car park. He was keen. It all went wrong and he still bolted up. Doesn't have an ideal draw on Friday either. But I think if he drops in and gets a good pace to aim at, he could go very, very well at eight to one. And interesting, the man with the Midas touch at the moment, Harry Redknapp, has bought into him as well. So Benevente for loud man Shane Gray and Kevin Coleman on Friday. Well, perfect, lads. Well, we hope you, the listeners out there, if you're going along to Fairy House at the weekend, we hope you have a brilliant weekend. Don't forget, once again, the five races that you can put your selections in for the five casts are now have flashed up on screens and have a really good weekend. Hopefully you get a few quid this weekend. And a big thank you once again to our sponsors, uh, Goran Park Racecourse, Syndicate Start Racing, Boyle Sports, our betting partner, and KCLR Radio 96 FM. Big thank you to Brian and to Barry for their contribution and to our special guest, Jimmy Mangan. We hope you've enjoyed the interview with him on the show this evening. Until next time, it's a very goodbye from the Champ.ie team.